Hey everybody, welcome back to the next part in my Creating a Great Tone series. And this is going to be revisiting my very first video in this series, where I created a template that's been downloaded many times and I've had a lot of great comments uh, from a lot of viewers that they really use this as the core of their tone. Every now and then, a lot of times when we get a new firmware update, I like to do a revised edition and maybe change a few little things out with new tools that maybe we didn't have before. The changes are probably gonna be pretty subtle, but it's gonna give a few more options for folks who maybe wanna try different things. So having had the firmware 3.15 released very recently in the last couple of weeks, I thought it would be about time to do a 2022 revised version of the template and a 2022 revised version of the Create a Great Tone video. So without further ado, let's jump over to HX Edit and see what we can do with this template. So here we are in HX Edits. Uh, this is the template for anybody who's watched my channel. This is the template you will recognize that is up on Custom Tone. It basically consists of an LA Studio comp at the end in stereo. It has a parametric EQ in it. It has a reverb, it has a delay, and it has a low and high shelf. Now, a lot of folks ask me, what good is this? This doesn't have an amp in it. Am I supposed to just play it like this? And the answer is no. It's a template that's going to allow you to kind of just drop your own amplifier in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come to our amp and cab and I'm going to just throw on a matchstick channel one. I'm not going to touch anything. I'm not going to change uh, the stock cab. I'm not going to change the microphone. I'm not going to change any of the settings. I'm going to drop an amp in to illustrate what this preset can kind of do with just that situation of dropping an amp in as a starting point. It's, it's always a good thing to remember. This is just a starting point. I'm not suggesting that these settings are carved in stone. It's just to get you up and running with something that's going to work fairly quickly out of the box and allow you the ability to be able to tweak in a way that's going to be fairly straightforward. So uh, we have this. Uh, I'm going to basically turn everything off in the template except the amp. So the amp sounds just like this, just called up with the stock settings. <laughs> Now let's turn on all the blocks except for the delay. Okay, so that's what it does. Let's go through this a step at a time. Um, normally, I've always had the LA Studio comp at the end. I usually have settings somewhere in this range, gain around five, peak reduction around somewhere between five and six oftentimes somewhere maybe 5.5. Uh, if I look down at my gain reduction meters, when I'm hitting hard, I, I maybe want to get like a dB to 2 dB of gain reduction. That's it. I'm just kind of kissing it with that to give it a little bit of glue to the sound. You'll hear we get a little tiny volume jump, which I could adjust for, but not really the point of this video. It's just giving us a little glue. Now, one of the big questions I've been getting lately is whether I am going to keep the LA Studio Comp as the compressor of choice since I did my video on the new Ampeg Opto Comp. I really like the uh, Ampeg Opto Comp. Uh, the LA Studio Comp is also an optical compressor, mind you, a tube optical compressor. I will likely stick to this, but in this video, I'm going to show you and give you the option and give you two uh, free custom tone presets, one with each option. You can download them, try them out and see which one you like. We're gonna talk a little bit more about adjusting this in a couple of minutes. I'm also going to have a parametric EQ. Now, a lot of folks ask me, well, everything's just zeroed off. The low gain, mid gain, high gain zeroed off. You know, Why do you have it there? And, and the question is a good one. Uh, what I use it for mostly is the low and the high cut. Now, what I am actually going to come up here and do is just take off the built-in kind of baked in low and high cut. That's one thing I do when I do add my amps. I usually let the EQ here take care of it. Low cut around 100 hertz, high cut at 12 kilohertz. Again, <clears throat> it's going to be personal preference. Uh, it's also going to depend very much on what you want your final outcome to be, uh, depending on the amp you're using and, and so many other disclaimers I have to put in there because I am not the keeper of the settings of where these should be for everybody. But I start here. <laughs> And I find that's a good starting place. Now you might say, well, why don't you just use the uh, low and high cuts block to save some DSP? Uh, I usually have too big an issue with the DSP uh, being a problem in my presets. 
Uh, if you do, then maybe that's going to help. Uh, but I put the parametric just in case I ever come across kind of a problem area that I want to be able to tweak really quickly. I do have that parametric EQ with a few bands of equalization that I can grab really quickly and make some surgical adjustments or just some more broad adjustments. But it's there. It's ready to go if I need it to be there. Now, one of the big changes to the original template is I've always had a little bit of room reverb in my chain. And the reason is when we play through any modeler, uh, we really don't have the sound of, you know, the microphone capturing any ambience in the room. And it's going to sound quite dry unless we add a little bit of, you know, artificial ambience to it. So I always have a room reverb on pretty subtly. And I thought it would be time now that we've had the addition of the dynamic room. I'm going to put it in there at these settings. Again, starting point suggestions just to give us a little bit more of a live sound. So if I shut that off, here's the tone. You'll notice I purposely am not adding some huge lush reverb to it. That's not the point of this. If you want that, you can add whatever reverb you want to this uh, particular template. You could also up this to a longer decay or a higher mix or whatever other settings you want. But this is a good starting point just to give us a little bit of ambience to our sound so it's not so direct dry sounding. I also have the transistor tape, which I'm not moving. You'll notice I have it turned off. It's gonna be uh, able to be engaged whenever anybody wants to use it. Again, fairly subtle, um, you know, if I want a little more, I might bring that mix control up a few notches. I might bring the feedback control up a few notches. A lot of times I leave it set on the note sync of a quarter note. Now this is the one block that a lot of folks ask me about, the low and high shelf EQ. And my starting point on this is always to have both low frequency and high frequency set at 650 hertz. I drop all the frequencies below 650, minus two dB. All the frequencies above, I boost them by plus 2 dB. Now, these do not, contrary to some people's beliefs, uh, these do not cancel each other out because they're set at 650 hertz. I've done videos about this before very specifically, but the shelf EQ is going to boost or cut all the frequencies above or below a certain frequency. So this is going to take, like a shelf, all the frequencies below 650 hertz, gently bring them back 2 dB, and then the high frequency is going to be all the frequencies above 650 hertz are going to be boosted gently by 2 dB. So if I turn this off, here's the tone. I find it gives a more polished sound usually with those settings. Uh, <clears throat> it also gives a very quick way to be able to tweak a preset in different rooms or different situations. If I find it's too muddy, I might take a little more of the low gain down. And I'm talking surgically here, uh, not using a sledgehammer, but maybe half a dB, one dB at the most, either way. And it pays huge dividends and can really affect our tone. If you want something a little brighter, go to the high gain, boost it by one dB, maybe two dB, maybe half a dB, really depending on whatever you're looking for. But I find these settings just give a nice polished sound right out of the box. And almost like I've always described it as a bit of a mastering section, I call it. So that's my template updated for this firmware and for this year, but let's not stop right there. Let's use the same template, but this time I'm going to take the LA Studio Comp out and I'm going to bring in the Ampeg Opto Comp. I have found, and you'll notice the settings on everything else are identical. Uh, I also still just kind of threw in the Matchstick Channel one with those same settings. But now we have the Ampeg Opto Comp. Now, you'll notice that I like the release set to zero, Compression gonna be around one to 1.5, anywhere where you need it to kind of just kiss the tone with a bit of compression, no more than one or two dB of gain reduction. I, on this one, I kind of like the sound when the mix control is brought down to 75%. So if I play this, I really do like what that's doing to the tone. So this is gonna be another template that I'm going to have up. Keep in mind though, anytime we have the compressor at the end, if I set that right now to maybe be compressing one to two dB of gain reduction, if I come anywhere before that in the chain and boost the volume, so let's say I come back to my amp and I go to my channel volume, which is set at 7.5 right now, and I crank that up to 10. <laughs> Not only is it going to boost the volume, but now if I come down to my compressor at the end, 
now I'm getting about 70 dB of gain reduction. So we do have to keep in mind that whatever volume boost we have going before the compressor at the end is going to affect how much gain reduction you get and how much compression you get from it. So it's probably a good idea to get your volume level set, you know, pre-compressor and then set the amount of compression you want by using the compress control or the peak reduction control on the LA Studio Comp. So this template preset will also be up on Custom Tone. I will have the links to those below. But a lot of folks might also ask, how do they compare to one another? Am I gonna hear the difference between the LA Studio Comp and the Ampeg Opto Comp? And well, that's really kind of an interesting question. So here I have a preset set up with the LA Studio Comp engaged with these settings here. I'm just gonna double check this. I'm getting about a dB of gain reduction from it, so very subtle. <clears throat> then Snapshot 2 is going to disengage the LA Studio Comp and engage the Ampeg Opto Comp at these settings. And I'm getting about the same amount of gain reduction there. So this gives me a way to just kind of flip back and forth between the two different compressors. So I'm gonna play a little bit. Uh, you could do this more scientifically by putting a looper at the beginning and playing the exact same thing through it and matching the volume level perfect. But I just wanna give you a quick idea of the different sound between the LA Studio Comp at the end versus the Ampeg Opto Comp at the end. And just watch up here, you'll see snapshot one is LA Studio and number two is Ampeg Opto Comp. What did you think? Subtle, subtle differences. I, if, if there's anything, and, and maybe it's just the placebo effect, but I find that the LA Studio Comp, maybe because of my gain setting on it, adds maybe just a hair more grit to the sound. So I don't know, maybe, I, maybe I'm just imagining that too. Um, they both feel really good. I think they both sound really good. And it's really going to be up to us to decide which one we like better. So you can compare between the two templates that I put up on Custom Tone and decide for yourself. The question I've had is, am I gonna go back and redo a bunch of my presets, you know, getting rid of the LA Studio Comp and using the Ampeg Opto Comp, or am I going to, from here on forward, you know, not use the LA Studio Comp and use the uh, Ampeg Opto Comp? And I would probably say no. I'm really happy with what the LA Studio Comp does. There may be situations where I like the Ampeg Opto Comp more. I really like it as a front of the chain compressor. I really, really do like it there. So I may use it uh, in that position, but I may also use it at the end. But I don't think I'll really be looking to actively, you know, boot the LA Studio Comp out in favor of it, although it is an incredible compressor. But everybody has their choice, what they like better and what they can use themselves. So there you have it. That's my updated template for 2022 in the firmware 3.15, uh, the possibility of changing out our end compressor. Although, like I already mentioned, I don't know if I'll really go through the trouble of doing that. I'm very happy with the LA Studio Comp version. Uh, definitely going to use the dynamic room reverb instead. I really love that. So now we have a template that what you can do is drop your amp of choice in and make your adjustments from there. It's just designed to be a starting point. It is not designed to be anything final. It can't be. I don't have the ability to know what guitar you're playing, what your final desired outcome is going to be, but I find that just throwing those blocks in gets me set up and then I can get to work from there creating a preset. And I hope that you enjoy using it as much as I do. So those will be up on Custom Tone, both the LA Studio Comp and the Ampeg opto comp versions and i'll put the link below in the description and you can go grab those and try them out and try to build some presets with them let me know how it works out for you i really hope you do find it helpful and that it speeds up your workflow a little bit so thank you guys so much for tuning in i really do appreciate you spending some time with me please like the video share it with anybody who you think would get some use out of watching it and also subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell notification to get notified when i put new content out i'll be back really really soon with some more thank you guys so much for tuning in again ciao for now